Hello my friends, this is my electronically screw. Let me show you what it can do. All the code, 3D models and instructions for this project are available on GitHub. First off it can just move the carriage left and right. It can also set the stops for the carriage so that it wouldn't move outside of the bounds. But I can set a stop on the right as well. Now it's limited to just these 10 millimeters. These three buttons are shortcuts for different pitches 0.1, 1, and 2 millimeters. To do outside the end operation, just simple turning, I'd set it to 0.1 and also adjust it with the buttons. Turn the lid screw on, move the carriage to the position that I need, move the cross slide to the right position. Since I don't want to go any further than the current position, I will just set the left stop in here. Move back the cutter and go back to the start. One more pass to get to the finishing diameter for M14. Now I will set the pitch to 2, because M14 is 2 mm pitch, and we can start with threading. There is also an option to show the angle of the spindle, should that be needed. So it goes from 0 to 359 and increments as the spindle turns forward. This is good at least for debugging connection between the ELS and the rotary encoder. It can also be used for cutting gears here or doing something else. Negative pitches are also supported to perform cutting or threading from left to right. In the past month I added a lot of features and fixed even more bugs. First feature would be the soft start for the stepper motor. It's critical because the motor cannot start at high RPM right away. It needs to slowly go up to speed, otherwise it will just be losing steps. I added support for the belt connection over here. I added a lot of unit tests. It was non-trivial to figure out how to do this in Arduino IDE. It's working and I'm very happy with it. The tests are actually running on the device. I added a feature to show the linear position of the carriage and also the angle of the spindle. I switched from slow digital read in Arduino to fast GPIO library which is crazy fast and it allows me to read the state of all the buttons even when the stepper is running. Before it was not possible, for example, when the stepper is running, to turn off the electronic lead screw. The only option was to rev down the machine to zero or cut the power. Now it's possible to change the pitch and also turn it off when the stepper is running. The list of bugs fixes is much longer. One of the bugs was that when certain conditions are met and the ELS is powered off, then when powered back on, it will start moving the carriage to a certain position. And of course it's quite undesirable, because when you just power on the machine, you don't expect it to be moving anywhere. So this was dangerous and um, should be fixed now. Um, there was a very annoying and long-standing bug that I tried many fixes for, uh, the stepper direction bug. 
Sometimes uh, everything was working well, but Stepper suddenly decides to change direction for a fraction of a second and this messes up everything, the tool is in the wrong place and if I would be cutting a thread at that point, that the thread would also be ruined. The root cause of that problem was that when I connected encoder to my Arduino, I used built-in Arduino pull-ups and those are 10 kilo ohm pull-ups and the resistance of those is just too big to provide a quick voltage rise in the signal. I am reading this encoder by reading two lines. When one line is falling, then I read the value of the other line to check if it's going clockwise or counterclockwise. Sometimes that reading was wrong. I fixed this in the end in the software and in the hardware. In the software I assume that if the spindle is running at 20 RPM or higher, then it cannot immediately change the direction. It needs to stop first. So this fixed the bug, but I also, just to be sure, added pull-up resistors on the PCB. So now it's possible in the newest version of the PCB to just solder two 2 kilo ohm resistors in dedicated slots and this will also take care of the problem. I also had an embarrassing problem saving longs in the EE PROM. This is the memory that survives the reboots of the Arduino Nano. There was just basically order of operation error and it was funny because the code was working well for, for values that are under 32,000. As soon as you go beyond that limit, which is like if you're running this for a minute or two, then the value that is saved, um, when I'm reading it, I'm reading it wrong. Then there were bugs basically in every line of the code whenever there were some calculations or conditions, there probably was a bug. And as a sneak peek, I already started working on the second axis, as you see. I have a NEMA 70 motor in here, and it's actually energized right now, so it doesn't let me, um, doesn't let me move this axis freely. I have a 3 to 1 reduction ratio and there is an unreleased version of the software for the lead screw that allows automatic, fully automatic turning of threads which is very cool to watch and I just love it. I like this footage at the end of the video, it's amazing. Um, there is a little problem though that the threads are usually undersized, I'm not sure why, and so the actual nut doesn't fit on them. As you understand, much more is possible if both axes are controlled. First of all, I can have digital reading of where the carriage is, making cones. I also want to support turning spheres. But in the two-axis world, everything is much more complicated. Now enjoy the rest of the video. One thing to watch out for when putting on the buttons is to make sure that they can be pressed while in the case. I had a problem when the holes in the case were too small and then the button just gets stuck, cannot be pressed anymore. Another decision to take here is whether to solder the Arduino onto the board or to put uh, removable legs there. The benefit of removable legs is that you can replace the Arduino or use it for something else when you don't need this version of the PCB anymore. And of course the drawback is that it takes much more height and then the default case is not usable and the screen kind of gets too deep. Of course you can also put the screen on the removable legs, but then the buttons get really, really long. It's also cool that it's possible to test the PCB if it's working without connecting any of the motors or the encoder. In the next version of the PCB I started using the 1mm screw terminals, which are much more convenient. Those screw terminals have the same distance between the pins as Arduino legs. After so many assemblies and disassemblies of this case, putting in the PCB, then the motor, then screwing the case onto the lathe and closing the lathe lid, I'm getting really tired of this, so I'm starting to rethink whether putting this case with everything under the lathe is actually a good idea. Maybe I should have just put the driver in the electronics box on the wall somewhere and then had the PCB in a small box just attached with a sticky tape or magnets somewhere on the lathe body? I'm not sure. 
I probably assembled and disassembled it 20 times by now. And those little bolts that hold this metal cover on are the most finicky. They're like always falling somewhere and then not fitting in. <laughs> I'm so sick of them. probably broke 10 or 15 threading inserts while making this thread by now. I probably made every possible mistake while doing that. The gears are great on low speeds especially if there's some grease on them. But on high speeds they're always very noisy. Here I will remove the gears and put on the belt. I chose the HTD 5M profile with 5 mm diameter of the tooth. This might be too big, so HTD 3M might be better, but it's a little late for me. I'm using 16 teeth pulleys and 180 mm belt. And it has exactly the right tension for everything to work without a need for tensioning mechanism. I am a little terrified to hammer onto a stepper like this, but it didn't really damage it in any way. Check out how much quieter it is. Here you can see how strong the stepper is. I can basically tighten this nut while uh, overpowering the stepper. The tension is just right. Here is the footage of the automated thread cutting with the second axis. The code to do this is not actually released yet. Thanks for watching and see you next time.